Uh, so I was pretty much by myself. Uh, Gandalf and the Motor Pickle is the name of the band you're in. What can you tell me about that project? Any recording from that, perhaps? No, we never made any recordings. I don't know. In those days, we didn't make any recordings. Uh, um, I didn't make any recordings. It never occurred to me to dig up a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder and record some stuff, although occasionally, I, later on, I would occasionally do that for friends, although I don't know where any of those tapes are. Gandalf uh, was started by Russ Warren, my friend, friend of many years, and I was playing at a, um, a coffee house. It was my first public performance ever. I'd been, I'd been, I'd been teaching at this private school and, uh, and writing uh, songs like Mad, and I wrote all these songs. I wrote 25 or 30 songs in that semester. The school went out of business. But, and then I, I moved to New Haven, moved uh, and, uh, after that, or back to New Haven, because I went to school in New Haven. So I went to this coffee house called The Exit, and, and I thought I would play, and I was very nervous. I didn't know whether I was any good. And um, so I got on the stage. I was the last act on the stage, and I didn't know any of the words to my... Uh, music at that time. Later on, I memorized everything. So I, I pulled up two um, chairs and laid the, laid the words out in front of me. And Russell said, uh, um, later on, confessed that he thought it was going to be a disaster. <laughs> I had this little instrument, right? Here's this guy with this little instrument. And uh, anyway, uh, it worked out quite well. And uh, after I got finished, a whole lot of people came up to the stage and wanted to talk to me. And uh, I mean, some people even sort of ran up to the ran to the stage, uh, and because they, they never heard anything like it, I guess. And uh, and it seemed to generate a lot of excitement. <laughs> I don't know why, but it seemed to. And then Russell got a hold of me and immediately uh, said, "We're trying to start a band. We're looking for material and a singer. Why don't you join the band?" So I met met his friends and I I joined the band. I became the singer for a little while. But I didn't. Uh, but in those days, if you had a uh, a band, a proper band was two guitars, uh, drums, and um, a bass, and uh, a tipple simply was out. So I wasn't playing the tipple; I was just singing. So I didn't like that, and uh, and I basically wasn't happy being in the band. Although although we did we played around a little bit, and we played in New Haven at this at the Exit Coffee House and some other places, some colleges, and. Uh, uh, and it was fun, but um, uh, one day I just quit, and and uh, and we we all remained friends. And so then the, Russell or somebody else did the singing. They kept doing my songs and and other stuff too. After signing with Bernard Stolman's ESP Disc label, your record you recorded also Little Eyes, but was not officially released. What happened? Financial problems. Uh, in 2003, the record was finally officially made. Can you tell me a short story about releasing this? Well, when Bernard first heard Little Eyes, he told me he didn't like it. So that might have had something to do with it, but I'm not really sure. Because uh, I know they were having uh, money problems. I don't remember who told me. But they were having money problems, and uh, uh, but at first it was going to be released because I was uh, working on the cover, and a friend of mine had made a beautiful painting for the cover, and I was working on the back, and I got all it got kind of complicated. I had a lot of photographs, and I was trying to make a collage, and I was taking forever to get all that stuff to ESP, and uh, sometime in the course of all of that. Uh, I got all that stuff to them eventually, but then nothing happened. And I didn't hear from anybody. It just nothing happened. Nobody told me it wasn't coming out. I had a test pressing, though, and uh, before I wore out the test pressing, because it was a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I can't remember. And it was the kind of te old test pressing that would wear out. Uh, before I played it to death, which I did, a friend made a good uh, tape of it, reel-to-reel -reel tape, and that's what uh, that's what was uh, released, basically. The reason Distill got it was uh, 
he had a cassette copy of that album. I had I had made some cassette copies. I think only five, and I sent them to some friends. I sent, and one of the people I sent it to was a friend in England who was like a big fan, a named John Farr, who had contacted me. He'd been spending years trying to get a hold of me. Finally, got a hold of me. Uh, so I sent him one, and John sent out some copies to some people, and somehow somebody in Chicago got a copy, and uh, people were interested. Clint got a copy from him, I think. And Clint waited a while. When it, when it was clear no one else was going to put it out, he gave me a call. And I had the album in a box here where I live in New York. And so I just, I just sent him all that. I sent him that and a couple of radio shows. And so he put it out. Can you please tell me a short story about your life after two, the two recordings were made? You were a painter. Yeah, I have an MFA from Yale University in painting. Uh, and I, that doesn't make me a painter, of course, but uh, I paint every day. Of course, the second recording wasn't, re Little Eyes was not released, so nobody knew about Little Eyes. I had a reel-to-reel -reel tape of it. That was about it. That was the only copy in existence because ESP lost all that stuff. Uh, what I did was uh, put on shows. I started putting on shows in New Haven uh, for myself, and, and occasionally, I, and looking for gigs around. Uh, so I, I played. A, I'd find places to play in New Haven, and that you could rent for, you know, a space you could rent for twenty-five dollars, or they just let you play. There was a space at Yale, at the Graduate Center at Yale. There was a room called the Enormous Room, where, and there was a small room attached to that. So I started doing shows in the small room, and then later on, I organized some shows, although I hate organizing thing, other people. I started organizing shows, uh, did a few shows with, uh, with other groups, uh, bigger shows uh, where a lot of people came, and uh, put a po made the posters, put up the posters myself. Uh, and also I played, there was a local communist party uh, headquarters, a bunch of rather old people probably, now probably, now they'd be probably younger than I am. <laughs> Uh, but to me, they looked pretty old at the time. And uh, rather gentle, sweet people were uh, uh, let me, for $25, I could rent their, their little space, which had a little riser at one end, and you could set up chairs. And I'd invite, uh, my fr and my friends would come. And I knew a whole lot of, at the time, I knew a whole lot of uh, uh, teenagers and, and, and also people in their 20s. And uh, so I could always get a bunch of people to come to a show. As far as painting was concerned, I, uh, I, sh I showed uh, at least every year I would have some one kind of a one-person show somewhere, mostly uh, in small galleries in New Haven, and occasionally I also had, I had a show at Real Artways in, uh, in Hartford. Uh, I had a show in 82. I had a show in Soho in New York. Um, so I had a kind of career as an artist uh, showing my work. But like I said, I'm still painting. And actually, I was just in a show uh, in Brooklyn uh, a few months ago. This year, you released recordings from 1984. The name of the album is Imperfection and will soon be released by Drag City. What do you think about it? Well, I'm very happy about it. I'm just happy it's out. I never expected that recording would ever be released because, first of all, it's in mono, and then the sound was not good. There's a lot of background sound because it was made uh, was made uh, in an apartment, uh, a great little apartment I had in, right near on a river, on the Quinnipiac River in New Haven. You could just walk right down to the river. It was really nice. But... Um, uh, it was right near a, a, tr a road that was very heavy, had a lot of traffic on it, and the recording picked up a lot of sound from the uh, traffic. To my pleasant surprise, Drag City uh, fixed it, and now it actually sounds quite good. So I'm really happy about that. Oh, if people don't know, because it doesn't say on the site, but uh, about the recording, but. Uh, 
All the songs are harpsichord, 